Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Thank you for joining us on Spotlight on the Word Sermon Series. Today we are going to look at a very wonderful but short message. This message is about a popular phrase in the scriptures. This phrase can be found in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. And so I would entreat you to spare me some few minutes of your time for me to share this message with you. As it is with sentences, you need to understand some words in the sentence before you can understand the entire sentence. It is the same thing with phrases. Sometimes you need to understand the phrase before you can understand the entire passage. And today's message, we are going to look at one of those phrases. A phrase that can, or a phrase that expresses a particular concept. And this phrase is at the right hand of God. At the right hand of God. Now, on the eve of 7 January 2021, we all witnessed some chaotic drama that took place in Parliament prior to the election of the Speaker of Parliament. Now, if you have listened to the various radio stations, you would have heard that the scaffold or the chaos started from issues with certain arrangements. I understood that prior to that event, the minority group used to sit at the left side of the speaker and the majority group used to sit at the right hand of the speaker. However, on the day or on the eve to the election of the speaker, the minority decided to take the right hand and that uh, resulted in that chaos. Now, whilst I was thinking about what is so special about sitting at the right hand of the Speaker of Parliament, I developed a deeper understanding on the popular phrase, at the right hand of God, at the right hand of God. Now, this phrase, as I earlier said, we can see this phrase in various portions of scripture. For instance, Exodus chapter 15, verse 6, Matthew chapter 26, verse 64, Luke chapter 22, verse 69, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, reads, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So in this particular passage, we see the right hand of God being spoken of. We can also see it in Psalm 17 verse 7, Psalm 18 verse 35, Psalm 20 verse 6, and also Psalm 118 verse 16 says, The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. So it was interesting even to understand or to read that even in the UK's parliament, that is the House of Commons, they have similar conventions where minority parties sit at the left hand side of the Speaker of Parliament. And this, the, the party in governance or the governing party sits at the right hand of the Speaker of Parliament. Now, in legal context, the person who represents the defense of another person is at the right hand. In military context, the soldier who protects his comrade is at the right hand. And also, it is the location for a drawn sword. In ancient times, a person with high or highest rank stood to the king's right side. 
Also, a person may be called someone's right-hand man or wingman when he or she serves as the closest friend to that person. Generally, many people are easily able to use the right hand and hence we consider the right hand as the place of strength. Now, traditionally in Ghana, the right hand is accorded with greater respect than the left hand. And so in greeting elders, it is the right hand that is used. This is not peculiar to Ghanaians because the Jews also respect the right hand. It is suggested that it is because of this that is why Joseph was boarded when Jacob's hands were crossed and his right hand was on Ephraim who was the younger instead of Manasseh the elder who was supposed to get the greater portion of Jacob's blessing. And so it was indeed a real challenge when Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your hand if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perishes than your whole body to be cast into hell. Matthew chapter 5 verse 30. Though Jesus was speaking figuratively, but when you think about the hyperbole that he employed, and then with the understanding that the Jews revere their right hand, you will easily understand this passage and you will understand why Jesus was telling them to cut it off. Moreover, Jesus' claim of being the son of man and sitting at the right hand of the power was one of the blasphemies that the Jews accused Jesus of. Mark chapter 14 verse 62. So the right hand of God is likened or it's related to the concept of someone being right or next to God, acknowledging both authority and closeness to God, and also having a special privilege or access to God. It can also be spoken of as having a place of highest favor with God, the Father, or being at a special place of honor of salvation or protection. This we can see various references at Job chapter 40 verse 14, Psalm 44 verse 3, and also Psalm 18 verse 35 and Psalm 20 verse 6. Now let us consider few verses that talks about the right hand of God. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. This is from Exodus chapter 15, verse 6. Another passage also says, Hereafter, the Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Luke chapter 22, verse 69, and Matthew chapter 26, verse 64. Another passage, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Psalm 110 verse 1 and Matthew chapter 22 verse 44. It was this message that or this prophecy that Peter confirmed its fulfillment on the day of Pentecost, declaring that Christ was being exalted to the right hand of God. Acts chapter 2 verse 33. Stephen also made mention of Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Acts 7 verse 55. We can also read Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. Now another reference. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places 
far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 to 21 also christ makes intercession for us at the right hand of god romans chapter 8 verse 34 finally quote who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him out of good. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21 to 22. Now let us pause and look at the phrase, the right hand of God. In all the references, we've been hearing the right hand of God, the right hand of God. What does this statement mean? First of all, the phrase is figurative. Of course, it is figurative because we can't think literally of the right hand of God that God has physical hands like humans do. And so we can't talk about the right hand of God and think of physical hand of God. If we do so, we will be guilty of idolatry. Like the people in Romans chapter 1 verse 23 where Paul said that they made God in the image of corruptible man. And so, the right hand of God can be likened to other anthropomorphic phrases like the arm of the Lord, God's powerful hand, and God's powerful eye, and so on and so forth. What is anthropomorphism? When we say anthropomorphism, it is a figurative way of describing God in human shapes and forms. And so it will be a mistake for us to think that when we say Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, it means he's sitting in some chair on God's physical right hand. Now that we have the understanding of the right hand of God, let us look at the significance of this phrase. The right hand of God is symbolic of rulership, authority, sovereignty, strength, and blessing. And so if we say Christ is sitting or is seated at the right hand of God, it means Christ has been given authority or power. You remember Matthew chapter 28 verse 18, it says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So when we say Christ is seated at the right hand of God, we say Christ has been accorded with authority with power by or from god the father and that is why peter said angels and authorities and powers have been made subject to him also paul added that at the right hand of god the father christ is far above all principality and power and might and every name in this age and that which is to come and so all things have been put in subjection under Christ's feet. This is what we mean by Christ sitting at the right hand of God. He left nothing that was not put under him. Though we yet do not see all things put under him. And so when we say Christ is seated at the right hand of God, we are saying that Christ is victorious over his enemies, including Satan, sin, and even death, which is the last enemy to be destroyed, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26. And so, when we say the right hand of God, we should think of it as a place of privilege, as a place of authority, sovereignty, a place of what? Blessing. And it is more interesting when we remember that it is this privileged place that God will set the sheep. Matthew chapter 25, verse 32 to 33. It says, All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one from another, as the shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. The sheep here refers to individuals who have entered through the right door, as Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 1 to 17 the right door is jesus christ 
And so for you to be part of the sheep that will be set at the right hand of God, you need to enter through the right door. And that is Jesus. And how do you enter the right door? You enter the right door by believing the gospel. John chapter 20 verse 31. Now also, you don't just believe, but you repent and you are baptized in Christ's name. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. And then you continue to abide in Christ's doctrine. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. Now when you are able to do all this, then at the end, you will be set at the right hand of of God. If you remain faithful to the end, as James said, then it means that you would be set at the right hand of God. Now, the greatest question is that, are you on the right hand of God? Are you on the right hand of God? Remember that Christ sits at the right hand of God. It is the right hand of God that saves. Psalm 138 verse 7, Job chapter 40 verse 14. And it is at the right hand that there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16 verse 11. And so it is not a wonder that Paul said we should seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Now let me quickly also add that woe to you whom the right hand of God is against. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 16. Now, bringing my lesson to a close, let us remember that the right hand of God is full of joy, blessing, protection, righteousness, victory, and many more special privileges that God has promised us in his word. And so, let us not think of the right hand of God as God's, God having a physical hand and Christ sitting on that right hand. But rather, when we talk about the right hand of God, we are talking about a place of joy, blessing, protection, righteousness, victory, and many special privileges. And it is people who are humble enough to become the sheep of God's pasture. They become the people who are going to be set at the right hand of God. And so if you become a Christian, you have been set at the right hand of God. And so if you are not a Christian, I pray that you would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will give yourself to Christ. You will repent and give yourself to Christ through baptism and become his sheep and continue to abide and follow him. And by so doing, you will be set apart or you will be set at the right hand of God. May we strive not only to sit at the right hand of any speaker of parliament or even to be called the right hand man of any great leader, but rather we will strive to be set at the right hand of God on the day of judgment. May God bless you for listening. Thank you.